Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Maytag dryer rear roller kit. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the instructions, two roller shafts, a spacer, four screws, two E-clips, two metal washers, and the two rollers. The rear roller kit supports the rear of the drum. The main reason you'd be changing it out is if the bearings have gone bad and the drum is bouncing up and down. In order to get to the part, we have to open up the dryer. We're going to use a putty knife and go in about four inches from each corner to release the locking tab. You can twist it and lift up on it. Then we can do the other side. Once you have it released, you can lift the top up and set it back against the wall. To get the front panel off, we're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to remove the two screws that hold the front panel on. There's one on each side, so make sure you get them both off. Now that we have the screws removed, we can let the front panel come forward a little bit and we can take the wires out of this clip right here. Once you have the wires out, we can let it lean forward a little bit more and then we can disconnect the wires from the door switch. If you have to, you can take a screwdriver and pop them off. Sometimes they're on there a little tight. Make sure you remember where yours go so when you put it back on, it goes in the right spot. With the wires disconnected, we can let the front panel come forward a little bit more and lift it off the mounting brackets on the bottom of the panel. With the front panel off, we can reach in on the right hand side all the way back and grab the idler pulley. You have to lift it and pull it towards the outside of the machine. That'll release the tension on the belt so you can take it out of the pulleys. Now we can use the belt to lift and guide the drum out of the dryer. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. Now that we have the drum out, we have access to the rollers. There's one on each side. First thing we have to do is remove the E-clips that hold them on. To get the E-clips off, we're going to use a flathead screwdriver to pop them off the shafts. Once you have it off, you can pull the roller off. There's one washer here, and then you can pull it off. Now that we have the wheel out of the way, we can lift up this felt and use a 5 16 nut driver to take off the screws that hold in the axle. Once you have both screws out, then you can turn the axle assembly so you can pull it out the cutout. The one on the other side is done the same way. Once you have the screws out of the axle on this side, you have to just let it drop down so you can catch it on the bottom. Here's the old rear roller kit next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. The manufacturer doesn't put threads in these holes, so to make it easier to put on, before you mount it, run the screws through the brackets to cut the threads. Then when you put it on, it's much easier to put the screws in while you're holding the axles. To put the shaft back on this side, we're going to feed it back up into the hole and pull it through. Once you have it in there, you can line it up so we can put the screw in. We're going to use a 5 16 nut driver to put them in. Now that we have the axle on, remember on this side the white washer goes on there. 
then we can put the roller on. You want to make sure you put it on like this. It actually has the word front down there. Make sure you face it towards the front of the dryer. We can put it down and put the felt seal down behind it like it was. And then we can put the new washer and E-clip on. The E-clip may be a little hard to put on, so if you have to use a, a screwdriver and a hammer to tap it down, you can do that. Now that we have this roller on, we can do the one on the other side. This one goes in the same way. All you have to do is line it up and turn it so the holes line up. Then we can use our 5 16 nut driver to put the screws in. Once you have one started, then you can put the other one in and tighten them both down. Now we can put the roller on, same as the other side, stamped front, so make sure you push it all the way on so we can put the other washer and the E-clip on there. Now that we have the rear roller kit changed, we can put the dryer back together. Now we can put the drum back in. Using the belt, we're going to lift it up and guide it back into position. Once we get it all the way in, we can set it onto the rollers. When you're putting this on, you may have to line up the drum and really push back on it to get it to sit up on the rollers. But once you get it in there, it should turn nice and smooth. When you line the belt back up, you want to make sure it's in the same spot as when you took it off and you want to make sure that the grooves are down. Now that we have the drum in, we can reach in with our right hand and it's a little tricky but you have to pull the idler pulley over to the outside of the machine like when we took it off and then route the belt through the pulleys. Now that we have the belt on, we can put the front of the machine on. To put the front panel back on, we want to swing it back in place and set it onto the brackets. Once you have it on, we can lift it up and reconnect the door switch wires. On our model, remember the 90 degree terminal went on the left side. And the straight terminal went on the right side. Then we can push the front panel up a little bit more and reconnect the wires into this little clip. Then we can push it up the rest of the way, up against the body, so we can put in the quarter inch screws that hold them together. Now that you have the front panel back on, we can lift the top up and set it back down into place. You want to make sure that the pins go into the holes, and then we can push it down and let the clips lock it in place. Now that we're done repairing the appliance, we can plug it back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.